Welcome again to our Lock Up and Look Up devotional series. Thank you for tracking with us in this series of devotionals, focusing on the spiritual armor. Perhaps it would be fitting for me to ask you, how are you doing in the war zone? You see, the Christian life is a battlefield. But the beautiful thing is that the battle is already won for us. Ours is to do the mopping work. But still, the enemy is not relenting, nor giving up. We must still wage the war and engage him in every turn. We must still remain vigilant and attentive. What we have learned so far is that there are three imperatives found in this passage. And Richard shared with us two of these. And they are, be strong and put on. So today I would like to talk about the third one. But before we do that, please let's turn to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13 and 14a. And this is what Paul says when he writes to the Ephesians. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then. Imperative number three is simply this, stand, or some translation states, withstand. To stand seems to suggest a determined state of readiness to do battle. It means you are aware and alert of your enemy, and you are attuned to the realities of the warfare you are engaging in. You see, the business of the enemy is to attack, and therefore we need to be ready at all times and be prepared to fight back. To stand means there is no thought of retreating, no time of negotiating, and no thought of looking back. Interestingly, the exhortation to stand is repeated three times to show the importance of standing your ground in the midst of the enemy's attack. You see, the idea behind the word stand, as Paul uses here, is holding on to a position. In other words, maintaining your ground even before you launch an offense. The devil is a master of ingenious schemes and strategies, and his tactics must not be allowed to catch us unawares. What does taking a stand mean for us today? Well, let me leave you with three things that I hope you'll find time to reflect on and apply them in your walk of faith as you do spiritual battle. The first is this. We have to know what we are standing on. You see, as believers, we stand on the sure foundation of our faith and the source of our newness of life. That foundation, my friends, it is the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, in the earlier chapters of Ephesians, Paul reminds us of our reality. He says that at one time, we were separate from Christ, excluded from the citizenship of God's community, and treated as foreigners to the covenants of the promise. We were without hope. We were without God in the world. But in Christ, we were made alive. And now we are to take our stand in him and his finished work on the cross. We also are to stand on God's word. See, the Bible is more than just a book to us. The Bible is more than just a guide or a roadmap for a believer. The Bible is the inspired word of God. It has authority to determine how we live and how we behave. You know, I love what Martin Luther, the reformer, teaches us about taking a stand when it comes to believing in the authority of the word of God and his teachings. When Luther was confronted by the Pope and the rulers of the day to recant his stance on what he believed the Bible taught, he boldly uttered this, the following famous statement. He said, unless I'm convinced by the scriptures and the plain reason, I do not accept the authority of the popes and the councils, for they have contradicted each other. My conscience is captive to the word of God. I cannot and will not recant anything, for to go against conscience is neither right nor safe. Here I stand. I cannot do otherwise. God help me. Friends, Luther took his stand. 
and suffer the consequences. We too must take our stand. But secondly, to take a stand today means we'll have to resist the devil and his lies. See, when we were struggling in our faith, or when we struggle in our faith, Satan will whisper words contrary to God's word. We have to choose to cast down thoughts by demolishing arguments and every pretension that sets itself against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. I mean, these are the words of Paul in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. So this is what we need to be aware of. As soon as we recognize thoughts of fears, doubts, our discouragements, our anxieties and temptations, we have to choose to guard our minds against the deception of the enemy and choose to think God's thoughts after him. God has given us, friends, spiritual armor to help us stand. When we feel the challenges of our faith, we can remember to suit up and then take our stand. Let me remind you what he said in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you will be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand. You know what stands out for me in this verse is the words, after you have done everything. In other words, we have to do our part. We have to put on the armor. We have to actively choose to protect our minds from wrong thoughts, our hearts from pride, our gut from lies. We have to take up the full armor of God. We have to be self-controlled and alert and be on guard. But when we have done our part, God does the rest. See, the third thing then is this. We can't waver between faith and doubt. We have to know what we believe, which is very important, and why we believe, so that when the ch challenges come, we stand firm in our faith. For an example, we can answer questions to why I decided to follow Christ. Why do you choose to serve him? What do you believe about God and his word? And I think sometimes we still waver between wanting to follow God and wanting to follow the world. If that is the case, we will definitely struggle in our faith. See, so the Lord is asking you today, how long will you waver between the two opinions? If you know that God is God and God is good, there is no question. Don't let the devil make you think Satan has something better to offer you in this world. Only God is God. And he alone knows what is best for us. He alone is the path to life. He's the path to love and victory. I mean, consider Abraham in his, in his faith. He was a man, a real person, just like you and me. But God gave him a great promise with little evidence that he could actually see the fulfillment of it. Read, for an example, Romans chapter 4, verse 20 where Paul says, yet, who, Abraham, he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promises of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had the power to do what he had promised. I love this verse. You see, Abraham made mistakes. He wasn't perfect, but he was fully persuaded. Are you, are you fully persuaded today that God is able to do what he has promised? If you are still struggling to believe God because of your trials, your tribulations, your temptations and your struggles that you are going through at this particular moment, let me encourage you that the Lord of all can set you free. He can lead you out of your miry place of doubt and confusion and pain and give you a firm place to stand on. So friends, open your arms wide to the love of Jesus. Let him lift you up. Trust that he's good and he loves you perfectly. He will make a way for you 
and keep you in his love and in his truth. All you need to do is to stand firm. Stand firm, friends, and God bless you.